Hi, I'm Peter Max. As far as I know, I remember I go back to 1966 around, and uh, there was already the beginning of a certain spiritual kind of manifestation. You know, Woodstock was happening, and uh, Michael Lang, who was a close friend of mine, and um, this was just a few years before Woodstock, because Woodstock happened in 69. But in 66, I get a phone call from a young fellow by the name of Conrad Rooks, who was the heir of Avon Cosmetics. And he wants to do a Peter Max film. Wow. And I'm like in my 20s or something. And um, I fly to Paris. He picks me up. And we get to the hotel. They take my bags to bring it up to my room. And he and I go right into a dining room. And we're going to have some brunch together. And um, as I'm talking to him, there's a gentleman, maybe 10 tables away, walking across in orange robes with a long beard down to here, long hair. And I went, wow, who or what is that? And then he got out of my view. The next time I, I hear a voice, and he's standing right between me and Conrad, and goes, hi, good morning. And Conrad said, Peter, I want you to meet Swami Sachidananda. Well, it was so early in the days of yoga, swamis, and holy people, that I figured Swami must be his first name. Because I never heard that before. Even though I lived in Shanghai, I lived in India, never picked up the word Swami being like a reverend or a rabbi or a priest. And he sat down with us, and after about five, ten minutes of hearing him talk, I, um, I was amazed at what came up, out of him, you know, the concepts about love and peace, forgiveness, loving everybody, you know, how the world is meant to be our playground and uh, that God is in us and we are all part of him, an endless amount of concepts like that. And um, then I suddenly said to uh, the Swami, not knowing he was a Swami, thinking it's his first name, I said, excuse me, Swami, what do you do? And Conrad Rooks, the heir of Avon, said to me, Peter, Swami is like reverend, like rabbi. That he is a reverend of yoga. That's what he does. Oh, wow. And I said, I was wondering because it was so philosophically interesting. And um, so we sat there and I was like beaming with the interest and so forth. And um, after about 15 minutes or so, the Swami talked a few things and he said he has to go and, and Conrad was going to go, you know, maybe we meet a little bit later. And I stopped Conrad and says, Conrad, do you mind if I go see the Swami and talk to him for a little bit? He gave me his room number, it was 657 or something like that. This is like 1966 in Paris. And, uh, see how you're remembering? Yeah. And um, I call him and the Swami goes, hello. I said, Swami, this is Peter Max. I was with you, with, you know, Conrad Rooks just a while ago. Oh, yes, yes, he said. I said, is it possible I come up and say hello to you and spend some time with you? He said, sure, sure, come, come. And so, get in the elevator. I go up to his floor, knock on the door. The door's already open, like cracked. He says, come in. He says, come and sit down. And he's sitting on a bunch of pillows on the bed with his back against the back of the bed. And he asked me to sit on the front of the bed, you know, that way, and talk to him. And I did. And I spent three and a half hours with him. It was the most amazing time of my life. Everything he talked about was about love, about forgiveness, about that we are all one. This goes on and on and on, that the universe is like, infinite beyond belief, much more than the scientists know, which is true. You know, they just recently found, you know how they know there are many, many millions and millions of more galaxies? They just found that there are thousands, and they think it could be millions, thousands of other universes. I don't know if you heard about that. It's mind-boggling. So he said, you know, yogis were in tune to that universe, to everything. And it's all about love and giving and forgiveness and truthfulness and sharing with others and doing good for others and on and on and on. And he talked like that for three and a half hours. And I remember when I left there, 
you know, maybe at by five, six, seven o'clock. I couldn't sleep at night. I was lying in bed thinking about these wonderful words that came out of him, how he talked about forgiveness and love and love all and serve all, which became a big line in one of my posters. Well, it, it, it um, embellished in my artwork what I was already into. That's why I was so interested in him. I was always, before I came, became an artist, I was going to be an astronomer. So for a 25-year-old guy, I knew a lot about astronomy, more than most of my friends. You know how many billions of galaxies? Billions of galaxies. I remind you, a galaxy may have billions of suns, billions of suns. Our sun, which is the only sun we have, is one of a billion in our Milky Way. Maybe there could be two billion. And there's billions of galaxies that have billions of suns. And that's our universe. Now they found that maybe hundreds of thousands of maybe more, they can't even guess, of other universes that have billions of galaxies. How do you feel about the rover landing in Mars? Is that how it's like uh, it was a film I was waiting for all my life, the rover landing on Mars. And there's not a, a half an hour every day here where I ask some of my friends, what's the latest? Have you found the latest? What's the, what's the newest? It's mind-boggling, you know. They've got, I don't know, so many cameras, 50, 60 cameras, and every kind of little tool that could, like, uh, you know, indicate if there's any life. You know, if there's so much life on our planet, planet Earth, billions of species, billions of species, you know, I can only count, I'm sure you couldn't count, more than 50, 100 species. And if we know and we studied um, some science, so maybe we know another 100 species. But there's millions, and maybe millions of millions. Can you talk about the, the 70, 71, 72, Florida, leading Ron Fox, whatever you can pull out? I just could. OK. Can you mention dates and names? Dates, I'm not so sure about. But I know after I brought the Swami to America in 66, uh, he came to my apartment. I just have to tell you that. And uh, my wife said to me, is he staying with us? And, uh, you know, he was all in orange with a beard down to here, hair down to here. And I went to the bathroom to wash my hands, wash my face. And when I came back, on her own, she got it. She was making his bed. She was rubbing his feet. I didn't have to tell him, look, he's a holy man. She got it. And I got on the phone that night and the next day. So for two and a half days, I called up maybe 40 friends. You know, I mean, even people I didn't, I knew remotely. I have always, you know, everybody has got their five, ten good close friends and I had like another 10, 20 good close acquaintances and I made a few more extra calls. I called them all up and said, please come over. You know, the next day or so at 2, 3 o'clock, I, I found a holy man from India. You got to hear him talk. But what happened is about twice as many people came because everybody brought a friend. And I had about 50 of these foldable, you know, wooden chairs. They were all set up and I figured I was going to sit in, in the back. I had so many people, that everybody sit, and there was about 40 of us standing in the back. And he starts talking, and as he starts talking, every five, ten seconds, somebody turns around and gives me, you know, like, whoa, whoa, you know, like the, the, the high sign, the thumbs up, like, I can't believe it. And um, then we opened the first yoga center within a week. I rented something two blocks away from me, and we, he gave classes. Almost every single person, every single person who was there that night came to the classes. And every single person stopped getting high, stopped smoking cigarettes. I've never seen anything like it. He never told anybody to. It's on our own. We just figured this is a new period. And uh, so that's what happened. And then, of course, I met more and more yogis. and then. We got another yoga center on 13th Street, which is still one of the largest ones, besides the one in Virginia, which is a thousand acres. The Integral Yoga Institute. The Integral Yoga Institute, I-Y-I. -I. He gave me the name. And when he was in my house still, he said to me, uh, Peter, are we going to call this I-Y-I? -I? I said, I-Y-I? -I? He says, yes, the Integral Yoga Institute. And that's what it became. And of course, a few years later, I meet this lovely lady, Rama Fox. And she was into yoga, too, and she was a spiritualist. We became good buddies, and we've done a lot of these things that spiritual people do together. You know, lectures together, find people for lectures, get art people to write articles, introduce the Swami to a new crowd, and all of stuff like that. And she's a, 
a lovely, lovely lady. I wish I could spend more time with her. I have never even thought about with people going to the left or to the right. Facing the left is something, it's, it, it's, I like drawing faces looking at, to the left. I draw some looking to the right, but they just come out easier looking to the left. So if I'm pointing to you to the left, it looks like I'm going to the right, right? But for me, it's the left. And they're always in movement. They're always in movement. And it's, I tell you, all my art that I do and all the art that comes out of me is stuff that I have no concept of what will come out seconds before I start drawing. I take a piece of white paper. I have a tremendous will to do it. I pick up my pen. The paper is nice. There could be music. There could be just the right people in the room. There could be the right influences. If there are any, if they're not, I'm personally just influenced by the excitement to draw. And I take my pen and I put it on. And as a few lines go on the page, I still don't know what I'm doing. And as I add more lines to it, I still don't know. And then suddenly something wants to come out and I embellish it. And I've inv invented a new drawing. So I've invented thousands upon thousands of images that I never knew would be on the paper a minute before I start drawing. And who is that beautiful woman that's always that face? That face represents a lot of beautiful women. That women are beautiful, as all men would say. It represents my wife Mary today. I've been married with her the last few days, was 15 years. Before that, it was my daughter Libra. Before that, it was maybe somebody else, Liz. And before that, was other beautiful women I knew. Probably Rama Fox was one of them. And I just draw, but more inspired by them than trying to draw their face. I'm inspired by it. Well, they were all friends of mine. They were all a part of the yoga Can movement. You say the names so that well, there was Rama Fox, Lee Taylor, Roger, Tom, Tom Rogers. John Rogers. Excuse me. There was Rama Fox. Give me the names again. John Roger. John Roger. Rama Fox. Rama Fox. Lee Taylor, Lee Taylor Young, and a lot of other friends of mine. You know, the Beatles. I mean, I remember the first time I got the phone call from George Harrison. Say, hey, we got ourselves. A Swami of our own. This was a few years later. I says, really? Oh, wow. And he said, yeah, his name is Maharishi. Oh, wow. How do you spell it? And I think he spelled it out for me. And so now I had Sachidananda Maharishi. Was that after uh, Swami? Yeah. This is a few years after. And uh, then I spoke to John Lennon a lot. And he was into yoga. But George was the one that really loved it the most. He had a spiritual flair about it and he was the one who recognized the Maharishi but once the Maharishi was amongst them they all loved him I mean Paul comes up here quite a lot and Ringo's been here I painted that piano for Ringo and uh, then I he and you talk mm -hmm. well back then I was inspired and you know every decade and every year as we moved along there's always somebody that's close to you in sort of the yoga realm and Rama Fox was one of those you know that's what got us together was not about anything else. I tell you, Rama Fox is and was a lovely lady, and I really can't wait to see her again. Well, I remember John Roz Roger was a wonderful force in the yoga movement, and I forgot when I met him, and because we saw each other many, many times, but I'm grateful he was there. He was sort of, you know, a large brick in a, in a wall of yoga.